Sandals Winter Blues Sale. Prices starting from $249 per person per night. Visit sandals.com. Everyone wants to be the Cadbury Bunny, because only he brings delicious Cadbury cream eggs, while others may keep trying. No bunny knows Easter better than Cadbury. And I'm having a good time. Tomorrow on ETR, exclusive with Father of 12, Nick Cannon, Nick's new career flex, and ready to have more of them babies. Oh, boy. We leave you now with... <laughs> I'm tired. Tonight's winter premiere of Grey's Anatomy on ABC and Meredith's farewell to Seattle. Happening now. Footage showed an officer putting his knee on the neck of a teenager while breaking up a fight. Personnel records raising fresh questions about whether this Edgewood officer should have been hired by that department in the first place. Inattentive landlords with rundown properties, beware. The city unveiled a plan today to make them foot the bill for extra inspections. How little it would take to get on that list. And I just made some last minute changes to the forecast that will impact your Friday and Saturday. I'll help you prepare in just a bit. The news at five starts right now. And first and five, no internal punishment for an Edgewood Independent School District police officer after he was captured on camera in November, kneeling on the neck of a teenager. We want to show you that footage Edgewood uh, from Edgewood officer Jonathan Garza facing scrutiny for using this controversial and at times deadly restraint while breaking up a fight. As KSAT investigates Dylan Collier found Garza was removed actually from the force, a different force. Uh, from his last law enforcement agency for a separate act of violence. A warning, this story may not be suitable for all viewers. A parking lot fight off campus near Kennedy High School culminated with this struggle between a teenager and an Edgewood Independent School District police officer now identified as Jonathan Garza. After the teen punched Garza multiple times, the officer was able to gain the upper hand before placing his knee on the boy's neck for at least 10 seconds. The district's five-page non-lethal force policy includes no mention of the knee-on-neck restraint, and a district spokeswoman confirmed this month that no policy violations took place. It was violent. Um, Six God, advocacy director for Police Accountability Group to Act for SA, said responsibility but also knowledge for both sides can come from this disturbing incident. It was very obvious that the kid was in an extreme emotional state. And I'm not saying that like that there wasn't some kind of like accountability that it needed to happen with the child. Um, but also, he's a child. Garza's personnel records from his previous employer, the Bear County Sheriff's Office, also raised questions about how he ended up on the force at Edgewood. While working intake as a special emergency response team deputy in August 2020, he pulled a female inmate to the ground, breaking her tooth and cutting her lip. BCSO dismissed Garza in the summer of 2021 for excessive force and issued him a dishonorable discharge. Garza took the agency to arbitration and was eventually able to get back pay covering some of his time on administrative leave. BCSO agreed to change his status to a voluntary separation and amended his paperwork to say general discharge in exchange for his immediate resignation. The sheriff's office says Garza is ineligible for rehire. Less than three months after his official last day at BCSO, Garza first put on the uniform for Edgewood ISD. A more emotional side of me says, like, absolutely, they get way too many chances. A less emotional part of me says the way that our police departments are set up in the beginning is wrong, is bad. For Case That Investigates, I'm Dylan Collier. The Bear County Sheriff's Office did file charges against Garza for assault and official oppression, but the Bear County District Attorney's Office rejected those cases in early 2021 after determining the evidence was insufficient. In a statement, an Edgewood spokeswoman said, quote, at the time of hire, Edgewood followed hi all hiring protocols. Edgewood ISD takes pride in our hiring processes and strives to employ top candidates that will follow the district's mission and vision, end quote. 
San Antonio police looking for a woman believed to be involved in a drive-by shooting last week. It happened at a gas station on Zarzamora near Buena Vista. A convenience store manager says that woman, though, no stranger to this. I know her uh, about three months ago. She was involved with the other gun shoot in my parking lot. According to the store manager, the woman in the surveillance photo got out of the white car seat on your screen. And while she was in the store, a man in the white pickup truck drove near the white car while exiting. That's what the manager says. Someone inside the white car fired shots and the woman in the picture ran back to the car. If you recognize her or you have any information, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. The latest now on a triple fatal shooting near Orlando. Uh, the 19-year-old suspect accused of killing a 38-year-old woman, a 9-year-old girl, and a TV journalist now expected to face charges in all three deaths. It happened yesterday in Pine Hills before noontime when Keith Moses reportedly shot and killed 38-year-old Natasha Augustine. Hours later, Moses went back to the scene. At some point around 4 o'clock, he returns to the scene. Um, he goes to the vehicle where the news media people are at. Uh, he shoots uh, both the people from News 13. Reporter Dylan Lyons was killed. His photographer also critically wounded. Investigators say the gunman then went to a nearby house where he shot a mother and her nine-year-old daughter. The nine-year-old did not survive. The mother also in critical condition at this hour. The city is taking aim at owners of troubled properties who refuse to fix up their apartments. The Development Services Department today presented a long-awaited proposal for more code enforcement of apartment complexes. Garrett Berger tells us that instead of waiting to hear about new problems at the same old properties, code enforcement is supposed to be going out and looking for them. It was apartment complexes with numerous citations, like Seven Oaks this summer, that helped prompt this new plan called the Proactive Apartment Inspections Program. We'll actually go out regularly, monthly, and looking at the property, looking at additional units uh, to ensure that they fix their issues quickly. Bad actor properties that get cited too often for not fixing certain types of violations, at least three within six months, would have to register with the city and get a lot of extra attention, with code enforcement officers visiting regularly to look for more problems rather than waiting to be called about them. We do want to get a good sampling of the property uh, on every monthly inspection. They're not looking at every violation for this. It's not about overgrown grass. It's about safety and habitability. So things like electricity or the AC not working. Properties would stay on the city's list and under the microscope until they fixed everything and gone six months with less than three designated citations. A housing advocate who's part of the group that developed the program thinks it strikes a balance with making sure well-intentioned landlords have a path out. But those bad actors, those folks who aren't intending to fix, they really don't care about the conditions. It needs to be unpleasant for them in the program. Which includes having to pay for the program themselves. How much isn't clear, but the city does plan to charge properties for having to register. I will need to have a proposed fee and a proposed ordinance uh, as I get the council, um, you know, which, which they gave me direction to do. So that'll be what we're working on now. Garrett Berger. KSAT 12 News. A tanker spill leading to hours long shutdown of I-10 near the Kerr Gillespie County lines. Right now, the westbound lanes are still shut down. Eastbound lanes are now open. Now, according to investigators, this happened at 730 this morning when a tanker truck heading from San Antonio to Sonora had mechanical issues pulled over on the highway. While waiting for a tow truck, a driver of a tractor trailer crashed into the back of that tanker. Here's a look at some of the damage. The wreck causing not only 3,800 gallons of fuel to spill onto the highway, but also batteries from the tractor trailer. Crews are still clearing up this mess, and it is unclear how long it's going to take to reopen those closed lanes. Meanwhile, let's check out Trans Guide on this Thursday. This is 35 at Loop 410. Always a very busy intersection and certainly no different at this hour. And earlier today, we briefly made it up to 80 for the high temperature, and it's not going to be nearly as warm over the next few days. We'll get into those details in a moment. We've got the warmth now, 88 Eagle Pass, even 82 in Lake East, 77 in Mico, 76 right now in New Braunfels. So feeling a little spring-like, still 80 in Hondo, for example. As we go through the evening, 
increasing clouds. I know you already noticed some clouds out there, but they'll become thicker through the night and the humidity is dropping around town for most of us, but not everybody. That's because we have a little cold front that's draped across our area. We'll talk about that, what it means for the next couple of days, because we just made some big changes to the forecast. I'll detail that in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. Now checking in on other parts of the country, of course, like Adam said, it's beautiful here in San Antonio today, but millions of Americans are up against a much different weather pattern. ABC's Alex Stone reports blizzards are hitting some familiar territories, but also places that are not prone to snow, including, and this is amazing, Southern California. From Portland, Oregon to Rapid City, South Dakota, record amounts of crippling snow. Winding snow. 25 states are under alerts for blizzards, heavy snow, strong wind, ice, and bitter wind chill. Over 60 million Americans impacted by those alerts right now, and it's still snowing. All of it moving south and east. The storm that hit Oregon on Wednesday now swinging south into California, prompting the first blizzard warnings in Los Angeles County in over 30 years. This is the first time I I've seen snow like this, like coming down like this hard and at this low of an elevation. Already snow is falling in parts of Southern California, but the heaviest snow is expected on Friday into the weekend. The California Highway Patrol is telling drivers to have food and water in their cars in case they get stuck. Highways will likely be shut down, and many L.A. area drivers are not used to driving in snow. We almost never see this, maybe once in a decade if we're lucky. Already a light dusting of snow around the Hollywood sign. All of the weather is impacting flights again today. Hundreds of flights canceled. Portland and Minneapolis with the most cancellations. These snow plows of the Minneapolis airport trying to keep up. But in the southeast, it's record heat, 40 degrees warmer than normal in some areas. Look at that. Temperatures looking like May out there. Orlando seeing temperatures in the 90s. New Orleans, 83. Nashville, Birmingham, and Raleigh also in the 80s. McAllen, Texas hit 98 degrees on Wednesday. While the Dakotas were below zero, over a 100-degree temperature difference in the continental U.S. Alex Stone, ABC News, Los Angeles. Still to come, we have an update on that Ohio train disaster, why the toxic chemicals are now being transported to Texas, why they're headed to Houston. Plus, what federal investigators believe caused the crash. That story when we come back. Myra Arthur here in the newsroom. Here's what's coming up today at 6. A new installment in our Fighting Fentanyl series. The deadly synthetic opioid is changing the way that local police officers do their jobs. Our Stephania Jimenez takes us to Pearsall, 55 miles southwest of San Antonio. A number of people died of a fentanyl overdose this past summer. And since then, Pearsall's police chief has been on a mission to protect the public. You'll see how today at 6. Plus, a video shows wild hogs roaming a southeast side neighborhood. R.J. Marquez spoke with people who live here and are concerned about the damage that these feral hogs can do. And rodeo goers are talking about this video, now gone viral. A horse trapped in place when the Budweiser Clydesdales got tangled. At 6 o'clock today, we explain how in the world they all walked away unharmed. All that and more coming your way today at six. Thank you, Myra. 100% preventable. We're still following the aftermath of the Ohio train derailment from nearly three weeks ago. And today we're learning that the liquid waste is coming here to Texas. And that's where a private company near Houston will inject the chemicals thousands of feet underground that is supposed to be deep enough not to impact the people living near that facility. This comes as the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board, toured the wreckage today. ABC's Lindsay Watts shares details of its report and what is now believed to have caused the derailment. This entire site will be completely remediated. How long has it been fixed? You'd have to ask the railroad. As Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg surveyed burned out rail cars and debris. The, the stack of 20 plus cars is right here. The NTSB releasing its preliminary report on the catastrophic derailment of the Norfolk Southern train. This was 100% preventable. 
The report focusing on a wheel bearing that overheated, referencing surveillance video that shows what happened moments before the train went off the tracks. The report says the wheel bearing and wheel set reached more than 250 degrees as critical alarms blared inside the train. At one point, the automatic brakes engaging. We have no evidence that the crew did anything wrong. The crew on board also slowed down the train before it derailed. We will not wait for that process to run its course to continue doing everything that we can to raise the bar on rail safety and to hold people accountable. At a press conference today, Buttigieg urged the rail industry to stop fighting safety regulations. He says he's met with residents worried about their health and future. I've been getting headaches, sore throat. But Norfolk Southern will pay for this remediation and make sure that they are making this community whole. It could take up to two years for the NTSB to determine a final cause for the derailment. In the meantime, Secretary Buttigieg is calling on rail companies to take immediate action. He wants them to require stronger rail cars before a congressional mandate takes effect in 2029. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. Take a look outside with live cam. A very warm day out there today. Looking for a little drizzle in the future, near future. Yeah, we've got some noticeable changes. I had to tweak the forecast to make uh, some drastic changes this afternoon based on the latest information. And that's particularly when it comes to temperatures over the next couple of days. It looks like it'll be even cooler than we previously expected. So from 89 yesterday to 80 today, down to 57 for the high temperature tomorrow. And then Saturday, just a little improvement to 63. By Sunday and Monday, we warm back above average and we get back to 80 degrees. So get ready for a much cooler day tomorrow. I don't want it to catch you off guard. Let's talk about the overall pattern and the setup that we have. Our clouds have already increased and we're going to continue to see that and it's even going to lead to some moisture. We'll get to that in a moment. 77 right now, a dew point of 49 with a northeasterly wind at 14 miles per hour. That's significant because a front just pushed through. San Antonio and Bear County, and you can actually see the front between Pleasanton and Poteet. Pleasanton, a dew point of 64, Poteet, 44. That's a big difference. 44 for the dew point in Seguin. Gonzalez on the warm and muggy side at 67, and it's basically a stalled boundary right now. You could call it a cold front, but it's stalling out as it moves into South Texas, and this is going to hang around for a few more days. That's one reason why I do think our temperatures will be more significantly impacted and we will have a bit of moisture out there. Uh, speaking of temperatures right now, it's not a drastic drop across the front, but as time goes on into tomorrow, with the low clouds and some moisture, it's going to be much cooler than what we had today. I mean, right now we're 77 officially in San Antonio, Hondo at 80 degrees, Catula 81, Beeville, 82 and 72 in Fredericksburg, but you get farther north from that front and temperatures really fall off more significantly. Get to near 50 in Dallas and Abilene along with Lubbock, Amarillo 41 in Guymon, Oklahoma, 29 degrees. So clearly temperatures do fall off farther to the north, but we're right on the edge the leading edge of that front. So we're not seeing a huge temperature drop as it moves in just that change in the mugginess and the moisture content of the air. It's going to be a classic overrunning situation. We'll have that front Front draped across our area for a few days flow up above us coming off the Pacific with some Pacific moisture coming in from the southwest. So running up and over that front and that's going to give us some fairly cloudy days for the next three days. It looks like let's actually consult our future cast here and of course it keeps us socked in tomorrow morning. I'm not expecting much in terms of fog, just low clouds and really low clouds and they're going to hang around all day tomorrow, then eventually lead to a few sprinkles from time to time. Real rain unlikely sprinkles. We'll see them just dotting the landscape periodically late Friday or I should say Friday afternoon, Friday night, and especially into Saturday morning. We'll see some of those sprinkles and add on top of that drizzle Saturday and Sunday mornings. So a little bit of dampness, but it's a nuisance dampness opposed to the needed rainfall. So 20% chance of those sprinkles Friday, Saturday and Sunday but I think about 100% chance of drizzle, especially Saturday and Sunday mornings. That's the kind of moisture we're looking at. If we're lucky, you could squeeze out a 10th to 15 hundredths of an inch over a three day span. Talk temperatures tomorrow morning near 50 in town, be 52 Stinson, 50 on the north side, Converse at 50. 
52 in Castorville and 47 in Bernie. By the afternoon, cloudy and only 57 degrees for the high temperature. I think we'll be in the 50s all day long. We could squeeze out 60 to 61 on the south side of town, but I think most of us will be in the 50s tomorrow. 63 on Saturday by Sunday, 76 and really a weak cold front hits us on Monday, dropping our morning temperature into the 40s by Tuesday. Thank you, Adam. All right, the Spurs back at it tonight. They've not won a game on the rodeo road trip. No, they have a tough game tonight. Too. They do at the Dallas Mavericks, but Dallas is struggling a little bit as well, and they still have not won a game yet with Luka and Kyrie Irving in the line about the same time. So fingers crossed, right? The Spurs can end that streak coming up. Kelvin talks about if he dwelled on the losing streak or not over the break. Plus, in women's college of basketball, UTSA is really coming together. Coming up. He's a great player. Uh, he can shoot the ball. You know how he plays basketball really well. I mean, uh, he's a he's a he's a nice uh, veteran guard, and uh, he can really play, man. I, I I continue to be impressed each and every game by him. Kelvin Johnson loves the veteran leadership Devonte Graham brings to the Spurs on game day. Southwest Division rivals will clash tonight when the Dallas Mavericks host the San Antonio Spurs. Pop and Co. are tipping off the final three games on the rodeo road trip at Dallas tonight, followed by two games at Utah to close it out. The Spurs have lost a franchise record 14 straight games, and they sit one half game ahead of Houston for the worst record in the NBA. At this pace, their desire to get Victor Wimbanyama could happen. Keldon Johnson was asked if it was tough sitting on that losing streak during the NBA All-Star break when the Spurs' last game was eight days ago. Honestly, I ain't really think about it, you know, um, kind of just thought about what we could do better. Um, you know, we just keep it positive around here, keep grinding. I feel like, um, I mean, you can't win them all, and uh, I feel like we, everybody understands the process, but we, we continue to get better. Um, so I didn't really think about a, a losing streak. I kind of just took the positives and, and see if we can get better so that we can turn that around. Spurs will play at the Mavs tonight at 730. Trey Jones is doubtful with a sore left foot and Jeremy Sohan is questionable with left quad soreness. The UTSA women's basketball team will host Florida Atlantic tonight in their second to last home game of the regular season. The Roadrunners are 8 and 18 overall, but four of those wins have come in their last seven games. The team is starting to gel at just the right time with the Conference USA tournament in two weeks. We're bonding closer and closer every day. We came in here all not knowing each other, but the point we're at now, I think it's a, I think we're at a great place. We're still going to connect. We're going to grow. We have a lot of more time together. We've had to work on chemistry a lot. So, I mean, over the past few months, especially, I feel like we've been getting better at having relationships and getting that chemistry. It's been an experience as far as getting them to, you know, to really lock into what their roles are. But I think we're at a place where we understand that. And if you could say it was a good time to gel, then it definitely would, would be that. Tip is at 7 at the Convocation Center where the team will celebrate Black History Month and coach is going for a career win 301. 301. 301. All right. Thanks. Black. Larry. We'll be right back. Don't want you to get caught off guard tomorrow. We'll be in the 50s all day long. 57 the high Saturday, 63. A lot of cloud cover the next few days and even some rogue sprinkles and morning drizzle for the weekend. It's going to be that nuisance kind of moisture. No good rain chances anytime soon. Notice how next Tuesday morning gets a little bit cooler in the mid 40s. A weak cold front will pay us a visit, but the afternoons will be warm. Those rascally rogue sprinkles. Ugh. <laughs> Tell me about it. Don't forget your sweater tomorrow. Thanks for watching the News at 5. World News Up next. See you at 6.